One of the areas that I think is really important that some people don't even know may exist is the preferences. And it saves me so much time by just checking some of these boxes and it will allow me to do certain things. So if I go into edit and preferences, and I generally just go into the general tab, and in here you're gonna see that you have some options here. Now I always leave show tool tips on because I teach, so I want those little tool tips to pop up. So basically when you roll over something, it will show you what that tool is. It's not working now because we're in this preferences, but if you want those tools to show whenever you roll over it, you can go ahead and check that. Here's one thing that was just added to version 15, disable smart objects. And I talk a little bit more about smart objects, basically when you bring in an an object or a photo, it will give you this little, um, oh, it's a little icon in the bottom right hand corner in the layers panel. And it will allow that picture and photo to be enlarged and then shrunk as many times as you want to. A lot of people don't like that. So if you want to disable that, go ahead and check that. But until you kind of understand it, don't worry about that for now. Select Move Tool after committing text, which I usually select. Here's what I like. I like the Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode. I like to float my photos, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. Um, enable Floating Document Window Docking. Now, I usually have that checked, and then I check Zoom with Scroll Wheel. That's hard to say and then I keep the others checked as well. So I'm gonna click on here. Now I'm gonna kinda of show you what I just did. So I have a mouse that has a scroll wheel. I can zoom in by pushing that mouse scroll wheel forward or backward, and I love that. So that's one thing that I always have checked. Another thing I always have checked is allow floating documents. So let me open up a couple more photos. So I'm just going to file and open. Let's just open this big old bear. Now it allows me before, remember when I had a hard time pulling? I didn't, I actually didn't have a hard time. I couldn't pull those photos around. Now I can take it by this top bar and move them around because I am allowing the floating documents. All right. So also you can go into the photo bin and you have your photos right there as well and I always usually hide that photo bin so I have a little bit more space, but just know that it is there. And you can show grid and all that from the bottom right hand corner. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So I do like to have my little photos fo um, floating because in the future you'll notice why and know why I like to do that because we can take little pieces of those photos and transfer them onto the other photos very simply. So again, you go into Edit, Preferences, General, and check the ones that you want to check. You also have Saving Files, which I keep as default. I keep pretty much everything else as a default. Scratch Disk, I used to play around with that in earlier, earlier versions, like version 8, but for now, I think everything's set up pretty darn good. I like my displays and cursors as the uh, defaults. There's transparency, so if you wanted to change the look of the transparency, which I would not suggest. Units and rulers we'll talk about a little bit more in the upcoming classes. And then we have guides and grids, plugins, and so on and so forth, which I don't ever mess with. So general is the place that I go in and kind of change. Thanks so much for watching this quick snippet taken directly out of the Photo Editing and DigiScrap Academy. My final thought for the day is to make every day count. Thanks for joining me and have a great day. Bye for now.